Hey, good to see you today at New Life. It's Labor Day. Tomorrow, you're, how many of you are off tomorrow? How many of you are glad you're off tomorrow? How many of you, how many of you wish y'all were off on Tuesday? Well, I'm glad for you. I've been asking for Sundays off, and I still don't get them. <laughs> hey, if this is your first time here, honestly, we thank you for being here. Welcome yeah. to New Life. Welcome to New Life. So, uh, uh, this Tuesday, we had team night. So, we want to show you this picture. We didn't get all of everybody, but I think we got most everybody. So, you put them on. These more... I think we had like 95% of the volunteers, and uh, thank you for all of you that, that volunteered, everybody of these ushers that were in the nursery, that are wearing these black t-shirts, and uh, thank you. I believe that God is going to do the opposite for you the next four months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah, yeah. So come on, give it up. Help me give it up to, for all the volunteers. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> so today I started a new series. The, 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 uh, the series is called, Did You Forget? How many of you have ever forgotten things? How many of you forgot your name? You got a problem. Houston, Houston we got a problem. They say that a guy hit his head. He thought he had amnesia, goes to the hospital. And the doctor asked him, uh, do you know where you're at? Yeah, I'm at UTMB. Do you know where you live? Yeah, I live in Galveston. Where do you live? 1907 Back Bay Drive. That's my address. <laughs> uh, do you know your wife's name? He says, yeah, I know. He said his wife. He goes, what is your name? I forgot. <laughs> he goes, I'm kidding with you, doctor. Uh, even though I'm joking with you, there's a serious problem in your life when you develop spiritual amnesia. And spiritual amnesia is something that all of us will face in our life. Some of you are facing it right now. You haven't even, you haven't even, diag you haven't been diagnosed with it. But hopefully during these next four weeks, because I'm going to teach for four weeks, I want you to not forget what God has done for you. Now notice what it says. Action is, I can't take the action for you. You can't take the action for me. You're responsible for the actions that you need to take, and I'm responsible for the actions that I need to take. But you must not forget what God has done for you. So the next four weeks, today, I'm going to talk about don't forget. Come on, say with me, don't forget. don't forget. Tell the person next to you, what is your name? And I say, I forgot. Well, tell them, don't forget. <laughs> next week, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you the reasons to remember. I'm going to give you some reasons why you need to remember certain things. And then in week three, I'm going to talk about the harm. Say with me, the harms. Harm. It's a danger. It's dangerous. It's harmful for you. When you forget two things. There's two things that I'm going to encourage you to do. You must not forget the goodness that God has been. The, how, good has been God, how good God has been with you. Let me ask you a question. Is there anyone in the house that God has been so good and so faithful for you? All right. Now, some of you are clapping. Some of you are shouting. Some of you are, okay. some of you are inter extroverting. Whatever the case might be. Don't forget what God has done for you. Yes. Now, the other thing that I want to encourage you is not only don't forget what God has done for you. Don't forget the people that God has placed in your life at different times in your life when you were down, when you were discouraged, when you were broke. How many have ever been broke and someone helped you? You broke now? Lord, help me. Help me, God. He's always broke. No, no, I'm playing. All right. How many you really, really, be, you know, you were, you were broke, but somebody fed you, somebody housed you, somebody helped you. Don't forget those people. Yes. You know, maybe you haven't not been broke, but you were going through a season of life that was tough. It was discouraging. It was depressing. And you were like, what do I, what do, I do? And God sent someone into your life that helped you get out of that pit. Remember the pastor talked about getting out of the pit and how God sent someone to Jeremiah and got him out of the pit. You couldn't get out of the pit. You couldn't break your addictions, but God was able, but God put people in your life to help you. 
your spouse, your children, people in your life, don't forget the kindness of that people. Because all of us forget, all right? And then, uh, obviously, week four, I'm going to talk about remember them. You got to remember. You gotta re- I'm going to talk to you about seven people that you should never forget that you need to remember. Talking about remembering, some of you heard already yesterday in Midland, Odessa, some guy, I don't know who it was, killed five people. I think it was last night it was five. I don't know if it's gone up. Seven already? Okay, seven people. There was a, a, a little, I think it was a little girl, 17 month old, that was shot in the face. My sisters, both of my sisters live around that area. They live in Midland. So it was between Midland and Odessa. My mom was, I, I, I think my mom was, I'm not going to the mall today. I'm staying home. But let's pray for those, uh, those communities, those, not only the communities, the people, the loved ones that lost all these people. And yesterday, say, man, if you have a loved one, hug them. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. So we're going to pray for them, and we're going to pray that the Lord will help us either hit you. How many of you were here two weeks ago when dude talked with the bat? With the bat? Y'all were here? I pray God hits you with a two-by-four. I hit you. God, if you've forgotten, if you have spiritual amnesia, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have the bat today, okay? I'm not, I don't have the bat, but that God will hit you over the head with a bat, with something that a Help you remember everything that God has done for you. Y'all ready? Are y'all ready to hear God's word today? Get your outline. Get your app. You can follow on the app. You can fill in the app, however you want to do it, but get your outline. Let me pray, and we'll get started with this series. Don't forget. Father, uh, we pray right now for uh, this community of Midland, Odessa. More than for the community, we pray not only for those policemen that were shot, but those Uh, people that lost their lives. Uh, We pray that you would comfort the loved ones, and we pray for those that are still in the hospital, that they would have a speedy recovery. I pray that you continue to protect not only Milano and Odessa, but protect our county, protect our cities, protect our children as they have already started going back to school. And I pray that today, God, that you would speak to us, that we would leave this day with the image of what Christ has done for us, of the image of Christ not only dying, but the image of Christ resurrecting from the dead because we do not serve a dead Christ. We, we serve a living Christ that is seated at the right hand of the Father, interceding for all of us. So whoever is here, God, that is facing something in their life, in their marriage, there are people, God, that are going through a wonderful season of their life. Regardless if they're going through a, a bad season of their life or a good season, God, that we not forget that it's up because of your grace and your mercy. And everyone said, amen. amen. So you got your outline? Come on, read it with me. There are some things I would prefer not to remember. How many of you, there are things that you wish you couldn't remember, you could forget? There are some things I prefer not to remember, but find difficult to forget. There are other things that I would love to remember. They're all too easily forgotten. There are some things we are told in the Bible to forget. There are things in the Bible that says the Bible specifically say forget some things. But there are other things we are repeatedly called to remember. We can make choices, but... About what we choose to forget and what we choose to remember. Say with me, it's up to me what I remember and what I forget. Now, this is the truth. Most people remember the bad and forget the good. So, all of us can say, all of us can say that God has done great and wonderful and awesome things in our lives. All of us can say, say with me, I can say. That God has done. Let me ask you, has God done great, wonderful, and awesome things in your life? Yes. Has he? Yes. How do you know he has? Somebody, someone said over here, I'm still what? I'm still here. I'm still here. How else do you know God has done? Change. Change. How else? You couldn't do it on your own. God did it for you. Amen. It was in your degree. It was in your last name. It wasn't in the hood that you were born. As a matter of fact, it was in spite of the hood who you were born in. It wasn't the color of your skin. It's not your good looks. Thank God. All right. 
But the question is this. The question is not if God has done great things. It's not if God has done awesome things. This is the question. But what happens when the next trial or the next blessing comes? What happens when the next problem in your life comes? What happens when the, you get the raise? What happens? I, I said it jokingly this morning, but it's true. There are guys that have, that have found wives here. Ki Young is one of them. Ki Young is one of them. But there are people that found a girlfriend, found a boyfriend. Either someone broke up with them, they never came back. Some of them got married, they never came back. They came to find someone and they, they forgot. They came to look for God. Come on, Pastor. Come on. That's good. And then a couple of years later, you find them, they're no longer together. Wow. Why? Because they left for the wrong reason. Yes. Yes. Now, it wasn't, the, it wasn't the person they married. It was either the trial or the blessing. So... Are you quick, am I quick to remember what God has done, or do we forget what God has done? What happens when you're facing your next trial? Some of you are, are, are going through problems right now. This is, this, look at me. Some of you are going through problems right now. You need to remember that the last big problem you had, God was there for you. You have forgotten. All right? Now, some of you are being blessed right now. Okay. I think only two of you are being blessed. Oh, Lord, help us. We're broke. Some of you are going through a good season in your life right now. Your marriage is wonderful. You got food. Your AC is working. How many of you have, uh, uh, your AC has ever broken in the summer? And your wife says, get away from me. Oh, you're sweaty. And it's not because you're hot. It's because it's hot. You know what I'm talking about? But God provided for you to buy an AC. How many of you remember driving cars with no AC? Mm, but now you're driving. A, it's my, it might not be 2019, but you got a car and it's got AC. All right. He says, my car is not 2019, but it's a 2019 AC. You got to make the best out of it. So, so this is the thing. This is, this, this is real. Most people will abandon God, their faith, because of a problem or because of a blessing. Instead of seeing God, they see their problems. And when God blesses them, instead of focusing on the blesser, they focus them, their, their eyes on the blessing. Don't focus on your problem. Focus on God that is bigger than your problem. Yes. Don't enjoy the blessing, enjoy the blessing, enjoy the blessing, but don't take your focus on the blesser. Because if you focus your, your, your life, your, your emotions, everything on your problems, you'll forget. And if you focus your life on your blessings, your degree, your job, your home, your marriage, whatever, if you focus on that, you'll forget. So focus on God. So there's two things that uh, I want to read to you is Psalms 103 verse 2. It's in your outline, but I'm going to read it together with you. I'm going to read it once and then everybody's going to read it together with me. So let me read it first. Psalms 103. Psalms 103 is written when David was, was an older person in his old age. He didn't write this in his, in, in his youth. As a matter of fact, biblical scholars do... Uh, everybody knows Psalms 23. I always thought that Psalms 23 was the biggest psalm or the, or the pinnacle of all the psalms. You know, there's 150 psalms. This psalms, 130, Psalms 103, scholars call it the Mount Everest of all the psalms. It is in this psalm where David tells, this is what he tells himself, let all, not half, not part of me, not 90% of me, not 90. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget, may I never forget the good things he has done for me. Or he, he does. Notice what he says. He do, not he does. He, because God continue, he, God was continuing to doing things in his life. All right? So le- read it together with me. Let all that I am. Now, some of you are like just reading it like you just woke up. Come on, read it. Let all that I am. May I never forget the good things he does for me. Come on, all you ladies. Come on, ladies.
All the men. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. I pray that you may never forget what God has done for you. In this version, he simply says the good things he does for me. The older version says, may I never forget all his benefits. Because God has benefits for you. Better than whatever you, or company you work for. You might have good insurance. You might have, it's not life insurance, it's death insurance. Whatever benefits you have, get them, go for them. But never forget the benefits, the good things that God has done for you. So during this, this series, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to encourage you to do two things. The first thing that I'm going to encourage you to help you not forget these things you must do so that you might, you will, they will help you not forget. Record. Find a journal. You don't have to go out and buy one of those expensive ones. Go to the dollar store. Go to the dollar store. Buy, buy, buy something where you can record your journey with God. Amen. Now, let me tell you why you need to record it. When I was in Bible school, we had a professor that said this, a tinted pen. In other words, you know, you've ever had those pens that you can't, they, they really don't write, but, you know, they can barely write. Our professor would tell us this, a tinted pen is better than a brilliant mind. A tinted pen is better than a brilliant mind. Why? Because I don't care how brilliant you are, you're going to forget I don't care how brilliant you think I am, I'm going to forget. But if I write it down, I won't forget. So you got to record it. Now, most of us, how many of you got did something for you in January? Okay, God God didn't do anything for you in January. You know know why I ask it? Because you forgot. How many of you got did something for you in February? What What did he do? Oh, oh, my wife cooked for me on February the 14th. And I ate it. <laughs> and I ate it. And it was delicious. I wish she'd do it again. She told me, wait till next February 14th. All right, I'm joking, right? But if you don't write it down, guys, we all will forget. All right? And then you, if you record it, you'll remember. Remember what? Reflect daily on answer prayer and go back and reread your recorded miracles along the way. When, when Israel passed the Jordan River, when Israel finally entered the promised land, and they, they crossed the Jordan River in Joshua chapter 4, God directed Joshua and says, I want you to give 12 men, one from every tribe, get 12 stones, 12 men, get 12 stones, and make it as a monument of remembrance. So in the future, when your children ask you, what do these 12 stones represent? You will be able to tell them, it was through here that we entered the promised land, and it was impossible. But as the priests entered with the Ark of the Covenant, God parted the waters, and we walked. And God not only delivered us from Egypt, God sustained us for 40 years, but God gave us this promised land. Now, I'm not going to tell you to go get 12 rocks. But I will tell you that the 12 stones, the 12 rocks, represented the 12 tribes of Israel. You need to have a journal to remember everything that God does for you every month. Because there's 12 months of the year. And every month God does something for you. Every month God has something for you. Every month God has done something for you. The reason is, why do I want God to do something new if I've already forgotten what he did in the past? This is why this series, I'm going to encourage you, do not forget, do not forget, do not forget, do not forget, do not forget what God has done and what people have done for you. You need to record it and you need to remember it. All right? So there are two things that I want to teach you today. Two things that will help you. Don't forget, because if you forget, forgetting leads to unbelief. And then finally, it leads to rebellion. Okay? Look at me. Look at me. Some of you are new. Some of you are like, hey, I came here for the first time. Some of you are. Let me talk to you, first of all, those of you that call yourself a Christian. Is there anyone here that calls yourself a Christian? You've been born again? Amen. All right, some of you are like, not me. He's going to call me out. (laughs) How many of you call yourself Christians? How many of you are true Christians? 
All right, listen to what I'm about to say. I'm not doubting. But if you start forgetting what God has done for you, you're going to allow seeds of unbelief to be planted in your mind and in your heart. What is unbelief? Not believing that God can do it again. That's what we were singing. I believe you can do it again. I believe that you can do it again. If you do it once, you will do it again. I believe that the best is yet to come. But when you're going through a hard season of your life, the devil will try to make you not believe that God can do it for you. I'm not worthy enough. I don't think I'm good enough. Look, look, none of us were worthy enough. But Jesus did what you and I could not do. All right? So, so if you start forgetting, forgetting will lead you or me to unbelief and then to rebellion. What is rebellion? I don't need God. I don't need my wife any longer. I don't need church. I mean, I've got all I want. I mean, I'm good looking. I'm, I'm saying what people say. I'm not, 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 not what I say, all right? All right? I mean, I'm at the prime in my life. I'm, 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 I'm at the prime in my life. Uh, so if you forget... If you, start, if you forget, it will lead to unbelief and then to rebellion. Say with me, Lord, Lord help, me help me never, never. to develop, develop. An, unbelieving an unbelieving and rebellious heart. Rebellious. Come on, pray like you mean it. Lord, Lord help, me help me to remember, to remember. everything that you've done for me because I don't want to forget and develop an unbelieving and rebellious heart. Now, notice what the Bible says in Psalms 106, verse 7. Notice this. I'm going to read it, and then I want you to read it with me. David writes, and he says, Our ancestors in Egypt were not impressed by the Lord's miraculous deeds. They soon forgot his, not some, or few, they soon forgot his many, his abundant acts of kindness to them. And instead, they rebelled against him at the Red Sea. They became full of unbelief. They forgot what God had done for them. And in their, up, in, in their unbelief, they became rebellious. So I'm on, read it with me. Our ancestors in Egypt were not impressed. By the Lord's miraculous deeds, they soon forgot his many acts of kindness to them. And instead, they rebelled against him at the Red Sea. So, so leave that verse up there. Notice, notice what David is saying here. The Israelites had been slaves for over 400 years in, in, in Egypt. God sends Moses, delivers them. God does miraculous wonders. You know, every time they, were, they found themselves in the bind, every time they needed something, they would call out, blame Moses, blame God, and God would come through. Say with me, God will come, it would come through. See, if God came through for them, God has come through for you and will continue to come through. The, the, the problem is this. When you become so full of unbelief in your heart that you forget and that you are either you become full of unbelief or listen to this or you lose the awe of God. You, you lose the awe of wow, look what he did. I've told you this, I'll remind you uh, about two years ago. My wife, I took my wife to a Japanese restaurant up in the Bay Area. We love this place because, you know, the, the chef comes out and they, the, they cook in front of you. What are those places called? There you go. <laughs> I thought you were broke, bro. <laughs> Your mom. Who's to say he's going to take you to hibachi? All right. Who, oh, he's a waiter. That's why he knows all the places. All right. He goes, I might be broke, but I know where the food's at. <laughs> All right, so, you know, the, the guy comes out, and the guy comes out, when I looked at him, he didn't look Japanese. I spoke to him in Spanish, and he goes, yeah, I'm Chapin. <laughs> Chapin is, I'm from Guatemala. 
I was like, man, I'm in a Japanese place being cooked by a, a, a Guatemalan guy, but he cooked good, all right? So my wife and I are eating there, and there is a family next, sitting next to us. And the, the man is there with his wife, and they have a, I guess, five-year-old, six-year-old girl. And when the chef comes out, with a Guatemalan ch chef comes out, he was in Japanese. And when he comes out, the little girl starts. <laughs> she starts doing, you know, they start, you know, I'm, they're about to flare up everything. And, and when the fire went, she goes. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, this girl is amazing. And, you know, any little thing that he did, you know, when they throw the rice, when they threw the rice at it and, and I caught it. She goes, <laughs> <laughs> Even my wife clapped how I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> you know, you, you ever seen that when they do that? <laughs> throw some more. <laughs> I'm full already. Let's go. <laughs> All right. So, so. Every little thing that he did, every little thing, even when he says, okay, it was a good day. So in, in me, I'm thinking, I think this is the, the first time this little girl has ever been to this restaurant. And that's why she's. So as they were eating, in, in a very polite way, I said, excuse me, do you live around this area? He said, yeah, I live around the corner. I live around. And I said, uh, I, I was so... Um, uh, amused, touched by your little girl. I, everything he did, he, she was doing this. And I said, is this the Because I'm thinking this is her first time here. That's why she's doing this. I said, is, is this your first time that you bring your, your, your daughter? He goes, oh, no. She's about five or six. And from the moment she was born, afterwards, I bring my wife and my daughter every week to eat at this restaurant. So in me, I said, wow, this little girl has seen this show week after week, at least 52 weeks. <laughs> I want her at my church. She's not going to miss church. She's going to. Because he said every week. So in me, I go, wow, this little girl has seen everything, and she's still amazed. So I left that place saying, God. But I, that I never lose my amazement of you. That every Sunday, that every week, that every time you do, that in me, in my spirit, I'm not going to do like that little girl, but within me, but I, that I never forget your miraculous deed because the time comes, listen, you think you did it. You're impressed with you and you lose the impression of God. This is, what he, this is where the Israelites, they forgot that it was God and they no longer were impressed by the miraculous of God, by the miracles of God, but God's greatness, by God's faithfulness. They soon forgot. They soon forgot his many acts of kindness. And instead, notice their unbelief, their pride led them and they rebelled against him. At the Red Sea. Do you know how many people have come to our church and to churches all over the world when they were diagnosed with a, a disease that was incurable? And they came looking for a miracle. And my God, they were here every church. They were here every Sunday. They would come every Tuesday. My God, he said, my pastor, I want to go to all the life groups that you have. Seven days a week was not enough. They wanted there to be another day of service. They wanted them. And finally, God made the miracle. Finally, God came through. And they never came back. They never came back. So I'm not saying this is a statistic. I'm not saying that. But do you remember when Jesus healed ten lepers? There were ten. How many came back? How many came back? One. I pray that you're that one. Amen. I pray that you're the one. Listen, listen. If the statistics is real, 90% forget and go on with their life, but only one came back and knelt down at the feet of Jesus and worshiped. And Jesus says, weren't there nine? Where are the rest? I pray that you will never forget what God has done for you. I pray that you never lose your amazement, your awe of God. Why? Because if you forget, your, your forgetfulness will lead to unbelief and then to rebellion. What is rebellion? I don't need God. I don't need God. I don't need my wife. I don't need my children. I don't, know, I don't need anyone. I can do it on my own. And when you do that, you develop a proudful heart. And the, the Bible says 
that before a fall, there's always a prideful heart. So I pray that if you fail, you get up and remember what God has done for you. I pray you don't develop unbelief. I pray that you develop faith like never before. I pray that you develop faith like never before. And instead of rebellion, instead of rebellion, you develop obedience to God and to His Word. That's the opposite. Say with me, that's the opposite. The opposite unbelief is faith. God is still able to do exceedingly, abundantly more than what we ask. God is still on His throne. Your problems did not catch God by surprise. It caught you by surprise. But if God helped you in the past, He can help you today. Don't forget what God has done. Don't develop rebellion. Develop obedience. Develop a worshiping heart, a thankful heart. Because if you forget, if you forget, you will develop unbelief and rebellion. The second thing that will happen if you forget, forgetting makes us do foolish things. I'm not going to use the S word because I don't like to use the S word. What's the S word? Well, look it up on the dictionary. Go down the list of all the S's. Samuel, Sam. But if you forget, not only if you forget, not only will you develop unbelief and rebellion, forgetting makes us do foolish things. Now, I don't want you to look at me. I don't want you to start thinking, oh, that's why he did a foolish thing. No, no, no. This is about you and me today. Forget about your husband that didn't come. Oh, man, I wish he would have been here. Forget about your dad that wasn't here. Oh, man, my dad needed to hear this. Now, you needed to hear this. This is why you're here. Because all of us can think on others. But the truth is this. If you start forgetting what God has done, you are going to start doing very foolish things. Okay? So I want you to see this. That same psalm, Psalms 106, David writes this. David writes this. Yet... How quickly, say with me, quickly. Quickly. Now, when you read the Bible, you you would say this, oh my God, how is it possible that they quickly forgot? Look, you and I are the same. You and I are the same. We're so quick to forget. Yet how quickly they forgot what he had done. Now, notice what happens when you start forgetting what God had done. They would not wait. For his counsel. Now this is dangerous. Look at me. This is very dangerous. Because when you start forgetting. You're going to start doing foolish things. Now this is what's foolish. The foolish is. That now you're led by your feelings. You're being led by what you feel. And not what God says. And now. You're making decisions based on what others have told you and have done to you. And now what you're not seeing, you start doing foolish things. I always tell people this. I always tell you, you're going to hear me. You've never heard. You're going to hear me. You should never make a major decision when you're, when you're discouraged. You should never make a major decision where you're going, to, you're going through hell in your marriage. You should never make major decisions in your finances. L- listen, most of us are in trouble financially because we did financial foolish things, foolish decisions. Can I tell you when you're making money what you got to do? Don't spend it. Don't spend it all because there's going to be a cycle where either you're going to lose a job or something's going to be broke. But you're you're spending, man, you're spending. Don't, Don't spend it. Live below what you're making. Don't raise your way of living. Raise your way of giving. Oh, you didn't hear me. See, you raise your way of living, but you never raise your level of giving. Don't raise your level of complaining. Raise your level of worship. Now, look at me. He says this. How how quickly they forgot and they would not. Say with me, they would not. You know what this means? They would not. They were able to, but they decided they were not going to wait on God's counsel. Okay, so look at me. For some of you, I'm just a preacher. Thank you for showing up. I'm just another preacher. But for some of you, I'm your pastor. For some of you, I'm just your preacher. But for some of you, 
I'm your pastor. That's right. yeah. The same thing. For some of you, you come to worship God, but it's a Sunday thing. That's it. God is not your God on Monday. God is your only Sunday thing. God is not your God on Tuesday. God is not your God on Friday. God does not want to be your God only on a Sunday. God wants to be your God tomorrow. God wants to be your God. Listen, God wants to be your God when you're at the pinnacle, when you've reached the mountain. God wants to be your God when you're in the valley because God is not only the God when I'm up here. God is a God when I'm down here because sooner or later, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, his rod will come for me. God will lift me up. His anointing will come and surely mercy and grace will follow me all the days of my life. Listen, listen. Okay, you saw it. You went to the counselor. You talked to your best friend. You talked to your girlfriend. You talked to everyone, but you didn't wait on God's counsel. Listen, you should never look for counsel, for marital counseling for someone that has gone through 800 divorces. I'm exaggerating. But some of you are going through a marital problem and you go with someone that has gone through I don't know how many breakups in their life. You're going to the wrong person. Some of you are going through financial problems and you're going to ask, listen, if you're going through financial problem, why are you going to seek advice with a broke person? And I'm, I'm not talking about Houston. <laughs> no, because y'all are, because he, he's not broke. You know, he's going through his season, but he's going to be all right. Amen. All right? Yeah. See, now, most of us, this is what we do. We look to the sides for counsel. Don't look to the sides. Look up. Yeah. Look up. Now, please, please, learn to wait on God's counsel. Because if you wait on God's counsel, sooner or later, the heavens are going to be open. You're going to see light at the end of the tunnel. And God will say, walk this way. Go through here. Don't make that decision. Don't buy that house. Don't buy that car. Don't get in that relationship. Run. Get out of there. God will give you the direction. And if you follow God's direction, you will not make foolish decisions in your life. Most of us are where we're at. Because we have never listened and obeyed God and heard God's voice. We forget and then we start making decisions based on what I feel, based on what others have told me. Don't don't do what you feel. Don't do what others tell you. Wait on God. Remember what God has done and wait, wait for God's counsel. And if you wait, God will direct you. Now, let me me finish with this verse. Verse... uh, in this same chapter verse 20 says this notice what they did when they started making foolish decisions notice what they did they traded their glorious God for a statue of grass eating bull notice what he says they didn't wait on his counsel they didn't wait on God and when they didn't wait they started worship they traded God, the glorious God of heaven, for a statue of grass eating bull. You know the story. The Bible says that they they were going through the desert and God calls Moses to Mount Sinai, and Moses is on Mount Sinai for 40 days, 40 nights. God is giving them the tablets. And finally, the, the, the people of Israel, they said, they told Aaron, they say, Hey man, our leader is not here. Moses ain't coming down. He's, he's having a good time with God. He goes, you know what? Let's get all the gold that we brought out of Egypt and let's, let's see what comes out. And the Bible says that they got all the gold and they created, they, they made this golden calf, a calf made of gold. And the Bible says that after 40 days, Moses came down and heard all this ruckus and all, heard all these people and you know, they're making this sound. And Moses says, what have you done? You know what the people were doing? They were worshiping an idol God because they were now saying that it's this idol, the idol that had delivered them from Israel. Now, look at me. Look at me. When you start doing foolish things, you'll start worshiping the wrong thing. You'll start worshiping your problems because it's your problem that dictates what you're, what you're going to do. Instead of allowing God to dictate, dictate your life. You start worshiping your job. Your job 
will be your God because it takes to you how you, you live and what you do. You will worship, you will worship a human being. That girlfriend, your wife, your spouse, your sport, your job, your car, your TV, your cell phone. Oh my God, can I tell you how much time we spend on this thing? This has become a God for us because we're more glued to what people are saying on their accounts than what God is saying on our account. All right? Now, listen to, listen to this. Listen to this. So I, I want to encourage you. Don't forget. Don't forget. David wrote 100, Psalms 103 when he was in his old age. And, uh, and there is a legend in Israel that says that when David was old he had built a room in Psalms 103 he had, he had built a room in the palace David built a room in the palace and and this is where he had composed Psalms 103 when he was old and in in this particular room no one no one none of his servants were allowed to enter this room only David would enter this room and in this room David had the wardrobe, the outfit, the dress, the, sh the shirt, the shoes, the sandals. Everything that he had worn when he was just a shepherd boy. So in this room, that's where he had his old wardrobe as a shepherd boy. So when David, his mind, his memory, he developed amnesia when he was forgetting. Now he was the king of Israel. He, my God, David became the king of Israel. Not only did David become the king of Israel, David killed Goliath. And the women would sing that Saul killed thousands, but David killed 10,000. David not only killed Goliath, David became rich, had women, had children. David had everything that he had ever desired and more. But like you and me, we tend to forget. So David would go by himself and get in his, this particular room. And little by little, he would take off his crown. He would take off his kingly robe. He would take off his whatever shoes he wore as a king. And little by little, he would start dressing himself with that wardrobe that he used as a shepherd boy. And many believe this is where David composed this psalms. Because in this time in his life he began to say let all that I am praise the Lord may I never forget the good he has done for me notice what he says he forgives not he has forgiven he continued to forgive all my sins I don't know about you but that's enough for me to say God thank you Thank you. No one could forgive me, but you have forgiven all my sins. If God has forgiven all your sins, come on, lift up your voice and say, God, thank you. May I not forget that you forgave all my sins. And then he says, not only does he forgive all my sins, he heals all my diseases. You might not sick and be sick in body, but there have been times that you've been sick in your emotions. Your feelings have brought you down. But thank God, God not only heals our body, He heals our spirit. He heals my broken heart. God has forgiven and forgives all our sins. If you're here this morning and you feel that you, God can't forgive you, I'm here to tell you, if God was able to forgive David, Jesus died on the cross not only to forgive me, but to forgive us all of all our sins. Because none of us could do anything worthy enough for Jesus to forgive us that's why he decided to die on the cross on your behalf and on my behalf to forgive us of our sins and by his stripes not only are we healed but he can heal all our diseases and then he can continue to say he redeems me from death you know what he's saying there are moments that I thought that I was going to be killed there was moments that they were going to kill me but it was in that moment that God redeemed me God saved me God delivered me and I'm here to tell you God has delivered you and me from accidents God has delivered you and I from dying the only reason Abraham says the only reason we're here is because God has been great and has been merciful with us and then he says and he crowns me 
with love and tender mercies. Every time David put that crown, he would say, it was because of God. I was a shepherd boy, but God brought me to this place. It's his love and it's his tender mercies. And then he says, he feels, come on, y'all can sing it. He feels my life with good things. He says, he feels. I didn't do it. He did it for me. He filled my life with good things. He filled my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. Let me tell you why he says this. Let me tell you why he says this. He was probably 80. He was probably 90. I don't know how old he was. I know he was 16 or 17 when he was anointed to be the king of Israel. You know what David is saying here? He is saying here, I want to encourage you. Don't live your life grumpy, complaining, bitter. Don't be a man that is bitter in life. Don't be a woman that is bitter in life. Don't live your life full of grumpiness and full of complaining. As a matter of fact, he says, rather let joy, let peace, let this be the reality. Believe that the best is still yet to come. Even though he was old, he says, God continue to fill me with good things. And God will renew me like an eagle. So I encourage you. If you have forgotten, don't forget. Because if you forget, you will become full of unbelief and rebellion and you will start doing foolish things. So I ask you this morning, when the next problem comes and when the next blessing comes, will you forget God? Or will you tell, give me that first song, or will you tell yourself, will you tell yourself, let all that I am praise the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. And may I never forget the good things he has done for me. What are you going to do? Are you going to forget or are you going to remember? If you want to remember, I want you to come and say, God, I want to remember. God, if you have forgotten, say, God, forgive me. If I forgot, please, come on, stand. Stand. Come on. We're going to worship the Lord. We're going to finish this morning just worshiping the Lord and say, God, I don't want to forget. I don't want to forget. And if you have forgotten, I want you to remember everything that God has done for you. Come on.